the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. For thirty years after his birth at Bethlehem, the life of Christ was hidden from the world, a hidden life. Quietly he grew up at Nazareth, unnoticed by the wider world. And then quite suddenly, one day this unknown man turned up on the banks of the River Jordan. Christ was still unknown, but John the Baptist was very well known. Indeed, he was famous throughout Israel. And Jesus came to John. Christ came to mark the public beginning of the mission of the Messiah, his mission, by baptism in the Jordan. And when Jesus rose up from immersion in the waters, he rose to the attention of all Israel. Something new had begun, not just in Israel, but for the whole world. And that something new began with a revelation. When something is revealed to us, it is something we could not have discovered or imagined or invented for ourselves. It is something that is given. A revelation is given by God. And what was given by God at the baptism of Christ was a new revelation of the mystery of God himself. The voice of the Father revealed itself to human hearing. The Holy Spirit in the form of a dove revealed himself to human sight. And God the Son rising bodily from the waters, revealed himself even to the touch of human hand, the hand of John the Baptist. And men at that moment did not understand it, but looking back over the years, the fathers of the church realized that this was a manifestation, a theophany, a theophany of God the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. The Eternal Father bore witness to the Son. The Eternal Son was baptized in the waters. And the Eternal <coughs> Spirit in the form of a dove hovered above the waters. Then John the forerunner, speaking as a prophet, inspired by the Holy Spirit, bore witness to the actual nature of the mission which Christ began that day. You remember what John said. He pointed out Christ to his disciples and said, Behold, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's him. And that, if you like, to use modern jargon, was the mission statement for the Son of God. His purpose was this, to take away the burden of the sin of the world. Christ our Saviour takes upon himself our undoing, rebellion, selfishness, all the wickedness of the human race. And he is baptised not for any sin of his own, but for the sins of every man and every woman, for yours and for mine. And under the burden of our sins, he will die, signified by his immersion deep down below the waters of the Jordan. Dying, being buried. And for our salvation, he is to rise again, conquering death, signifies by his rising from the waters. And we, his friends, his followers, his disciples, we Christian people, we have our part to play in response to Christ's loving death and resurrection. Our salvation from sin and death is not the work of God alone. We are not puppets on a string, manipulated with no contribution from our own minds, our own selves. But neither is it some merely human work of ours, as though we could pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and make ourselves perfect. We are not saved by faith alone. We are not saved by faith alone. We are not saved by good work alone. We are saved by a wonderful and merciful cooperation between God and ourselves, a working together with God, 
a cooperation which the fathers call synergy. Synergy. Working together with God. We cannot save ourselves, and God will not save us without our cooperation. We need to respond. We need to cooperate with Christ. Surrender our sinful ways. Die to selfishness. And rise again. Ransomed, <coughs> healed, restored, forgiven. But we know that without God's help, we cannot overcome our own selfishness, our sin, and certainly we cannot on our own overcome death. Without our cooperation, God himself will not save us because he has given us free will, the freedom to choose how we shall live, what we shall do, and how we shall respond to the initiative God made upon the earth in the coming of Christ. <coughs> we are free to accept salvation, and we are free to reject it. The choice is ours. He is our Saviour. Christ is the way to salvation. And all this we shall celebrate not here in the church hidden from the eyes of the world, but down at Lincoln Waterside on Wednesday next, the Feast of the Theophany. At twelve midday we shall gather on the waterside platform of the Brayford Pool near the Odeon Cinema, with the cross and our parish banners, with icons and incense, with song and with prayer, and there we shall celebrate the baptism of Christ, <coughs> the revelation of the Trinity, and we shall do this by blessing the waters of the Brayford Pool. And this is the occasion in the year when we Orthodox people bear witness to our faith in the heart of our city, in the open air for all to see. Do everything you can to be there if it's at all possible. Bring your family and your friends. This is your chance to witness to your faith in the face of the city in which we dwell and which we live. And after the waterside service, we plan to retire to the Square Sale Cafe Bar to warm ourselves up with hot drinks and, if you wish, have some lunch. We, Anis and I, did some exploration of all the eateries along the waterfront. And we chose this one because it's good quality stuff. They're not paying me to say this. <laughs> it's good quality stuff and it's not expensive. It's affordable. And it's about two seconds walk from where we should be holding the service. So if you possibly can, do your part in this small witness to our faith in the heart of Lincoln on the Feast of the Offening. Wednesday next, 12 noon, by the Brayford Pool. <coughs>